like this. So, Mike, on your new solo album, Cheating at Solitaire, you have a bunch of guest stars, including Bruce Springsteen, who duets with you on Misery Loves Company. I wanted to know how that came about. Um, I'm not really sure, you know. <laughs> it's not like I called him up on the phone, hey, Bruce. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I do know that he was like a fan of Social D, and, and I, I started looking at him over the years much more um, as a songwriter uh, rather than a, you know, um, TV figure or something. Right. And, uh, and the first time, like, I really recognized it was when Robert Gordon was covering one of his songs, like, years ago. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, this record is really um, kind of dark, somber, working class vibe to it, and I thought that, you know, we get some people like that to add uh, their own um, element to it. It, w it would be very special. It would be more of a special record. Right. So, uh, and he did. He, he brought a lot to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great song. Uh, how about Brian Setzer? He guests on Crime Don't Pay. Mm -hmm. Another well, I, tune. I wrote that song. Uh, that song was just period, you know, it's just calling for him, you know. Oh, screaming and, atmosphere. Right. And uh, what was neat, because, I mean, I, I was always a Stray Cat fan, and from the early days, I, mean, I remember we used to look at the records and, okay, we just want four tattoos. <laughs> well, here, when he, and obviously I got more, but uh, what was neat was, because the Stray Cats were pretty kind of upbeat and, and happy, and the song Crime Don't Pay is pretty. We were talking earlier about, like, there was more to the 50s than sock hops and soda jerks, yeah, right. you know? And uh, so it was neat to hear him playing that same era, but but dark. Mm -hmm. And he really just sounds really like sleazy, greasy, you know, dirty. <laughs> Which is the way I wanted the record to sound. I didn't want a bright, shiny, happy no. record. All right, well, we will have more with Mike Ness when 120 Minutes returns, and he'll be doing an acoustic performance for us. But right now, let's check out the top 10 singles and alternative music this week. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm Jancy Dunn, and I'm here with Mike Ness, who is going to perform shortly for us uh, the first single off of his new album. It's called Don't Think Twice, which, of course, is a Dylan tune. Uh, why is Bob Dylan important to you? Uh, I'm not, like, a huge Bob Dylan fan. Okay. The first time I heard the, the song was uh, J Joan Baez doing it mm -hmm. with an acoustic guitar, and hearing a female version of that song was really, like, um, it's kind of like a woman's perspective, and it's kind of, kind of chilly. And uh, but it's the same way I picked all the other covers for the record, or all the uh, covers I've picked in the past. Usually, it's a song that I just really uh, love, and I've been playing it at, at home in my kitchen or dining room for six months, anyways. And it's changed and become mine. Uh huh. And then I just want to like, you know, go show everyone. You know, <laughs> you've what been, I've done. <laughs> <laughs> you've been squirreling away a lot of uh, cover songs for a while now, right, for this album. You had some 25 songs. Not that they were all covers, of course. Lots of right. originals. Which ones didn't make the album that also um, kind of say what your other uh, There was are? a song uh, we kind of kept aside maybe for a soundtrack or maybe for the next record. It was uh, called Company C. It was about my one of my mentors, a friend of mine, an older guy from the, here from the East Coast. And he's kind of been my mentor for like the last 15 years and he, when he was young he was like an east coast wise guy and then went to vietnam and just he's just a one of my best friends in the world and i wanted to write a song about him mm -hmm. and because his i mean i've led a pretty interesting life yeah but uh you know like those guys from the older school than you like i always think oh, i'm old school you know blah 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 but i have some friends that just like you know, humble me, you know, like, I mean, he's one of them. I mean, like, he could kick my ass, like, <clears throat> I got a couple, few friends like that. So, um, but, I, you know, it's, it's neat. It's like my b big brother I never had or something. So I wanted cool. to write a song about him. 
All right, well, we've got more to talk about with Mike Ness, but right now we have a video from Boz Lerman. It's from the album Something for Every. You have said that Woody Guthrie is punk, you feel, and I wanted to know if you could uh, tell me why. Tell the kids that may not be familiar with Woody. Well, I mean, I, I, early on I saw a definite connection to roots, American roots music, or even further than that, European folk music, where it all began, but I mean, to punk music because uh, it was, I mean, if you listen to like depression blues or, or you know, the immigrants, folk music, Appalachian, you know, stuff or, or you know, Delta blues, country, uh, it's working class. It's working class, middle to lower class music, singing about middle to lower class issues, you know, and uh, what a lot of people forget was that was what the whole punk thing was about. It was not only a rebellion against, uh, you know, the media and fashion industry and, and record industry and all that, but it was also socioeconomic stuff. Mm -hmm. Most of us for, were from broken homes and, and uh, so I always related to like, you know, crying in your beer <laughs> or, or uh, you know, getting in a bar, bar room brawl or, or just being poor or, or all of that, you know, because that's where I come from. So I, I really identify. Plus, it just seems to me that that music is much more heartfelt, right. you know, than, uh, than cute. Mm -hmm. you know, I, don't, I don't like cute. Um, I, I like heartfelt, and I, that's why most of the music I listen to is 30 to 40 years old. Is it? Yeah, I mean, this, and I can never, don't ask me what I like happening now because I'll draw a complete blank. There okay. is some new it stuff happens. I do like. Okay, sure. But, sure. Um, but it's, I, I get like most of my inspiration, unfortunately, from people who are dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, you will hear a lot of his influences on uh, Mike's new solo album, Cheating at Solitaire, which will be in stores tomorrow, April 13th. So go get it. Also, don't forget to check out Social Distortion albums like Mommy's Little Monster, Prison Bound, Social Distortion, Somewhere Between Heaven and Hell, White Light, White Heat, White Trash. Oh, the output, huh? And uh, 1998's Live at the Roxy, Live at the Roxy All right. recorded last year. And look for Mike on tour. After the break, we'll have an acoustic performance for Mike Ness. So stay tuned. <laughs> 